At Kroger, we believe fresh means holding our produce to a higher standard. That's why we do up to a 27-point inspection on our produce. Like for citrus, we check for things like scarring and sunburn. Yep, oranges can sunburn. And we'll make sure you never see it. In fact, we only allow the best oranges, lemons, and grapefruits to reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh for everyone, we believe the juice is worth the squeeze. Kroger, fresh for everyone. You spend the first hour of your vacation at the luggage carousel thinking there's nowhere to go but up. But there is a place to go but up. Because when you open your suitcase, you find it filled with dolls. Dolls like the ones in that movie that scared you so much you wet your girlfriend's bed. Ah, Marissa, the one that got away. You return the bag to the airport with relief. It lasts until you get back to your room, where a fallen doll waits to greet you. Don't let a suitcase full of dolls ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. GoRVing.com. Yo, welcome to the bar. Come on and pull up a seat. And open up your Bible, what a wonderful feast The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets The inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet It's where we challenge worldviews that we hear from world news In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you We're your source for resources To help you on your way as you battle mean forces This is for the people who can see the importance Of sound theology and the scripture that support it And this is for the truth lovers Biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations Yeah, welcome to the of reformation yeah the bar biblical and reformed welcome everybody to the bar it's your boy Dwayne in the building right back in here another tuesday super excited as always be coming through your speakers through your earbuds where we listen to the bar we're grateful that you're listening and i love to start the show off the same way every week by thanking the listeners thank you guys for listening to the bar podcast your favorite podcast and i do the same thing every week by bringing an awesome guest and this awesome guest i've been following for a while on twitter and Kind of watching from afar. I actually got to meet in person uh, a couple months ago. And uh, I, I'm super excited to bring to the bar our podcast family. It's Violet. How you doing? I'm fine. I'm glad to be here. Finally made it. Yes, you are official. This is the gateway into the world of the reform being known. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, first, like I told you before we started recording, I appreciate you coming on and taking time out of your schedule. Um, the bar is usually audio only, folks. But uh, if you can see, we're on a video chat. She got the, the background is perfect. She looks nice and she got it all set up. I wish it was video so you guys could see it as well. And uh, also hat tip to the hubby for making sure we got the game going with the audio and everything. But before we jump in, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to my listeners and uh, just tell a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vale Chikuni, and I do have my YouTube channel. It's called Burian Babes. I was born and raised in Malawi. I moved to the U.S. in 2006. So, but most of my family, some are still back home and some are still here. I'm married to my wonderful husband. We've been married for 12 years. And awesome. his name is Louis Chikuni. He's an oh. MC, by the way. He's an MC. All right. Yes, he is. All right. We have to get him to send me some stuff so we can throw it in on, on the podcast. I would yeah, love it. Yeah, that would be nice. Yes, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. So you talked about having a YouTube channel and uh, what came, what what was the, the purpose behind starting a YouTube channel? What inspired you? Why did you feel like you needed to have a voice and talk about stuff? Yeah, the reason why I ended up having uh, my YouTube channel, I do have, I have friends here and I still have friends back home. So it's sort of like hard to talk about certain things. Um, mm. I can talk with one person, but not all of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I figured if I can have uh, a program where I'll be able to, you know, reach people over here as well as reach people back home, that would be awesome. So I figured like YouTube will be the best. And the other thing that also I did uh, find out with my work, my background, by the way, I used to be in Seventh-day Adventist. Oh. So once I came to know the Lord, I know there are so many people who are in the same situation like me. And we always think like, ah, oh, theology, that's bad bane, just, just for men only. Just like, no, like we are also called to know our scripture. We're also called to know our Bibles. So I figured like YouTube channel would be the best channel for me to do that. 
Awesome. Awesome. Now you, 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 you brought up being a seven day advent, please. Let's talk about that story, <laughs> that transition. I didn't know that part, so I'm excited. <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, uh, being in that and the transition out of that. I mean, cause I I'm super intrigued. Let's talk, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, my family is pretty much still an Adventist. I, I grew up, um, in that church. When we moved here, we actually got married in the seven day Adventist church good church the whole nine years but um uh, my my husband used to be anglican but he wasn't you know just um uh, in fact one other thing like in africa if you ask anybody is going to tell you he's a christian and they're going to tell you the church that they belong to but mm. whether they're genuine uh followers of christ that's a whole different subject altogether mm. mm -hmm. so when i was here uh we were going to church my husband joined the church and he got baptized then he started looking at the teachings of the Seventh Day Adventist, and the stuff wasn't adding up. Mm -hmm. And been asked to me, I was just like, you know, yes, this is, you know, uh, this is a good church. We keep the Sabbath. If you know, the Sunday church is pretty much the mark of the beast. So what else? This, this mm -hmm. is it. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he said, you know, I'm going to leave. I was just like, what? <laughs> You're going to leave? I thought he was just making it up. Mm -hmm. And meantime, we're having these debates, arguments, me and my husband, and I'm busy praying like there's no way God would want me to be going to a different church with my husband. And then one Saturday morning, you know, I got ready. We're going to church. My husband is saying me, no, I'm not going. I said, no, you're going. He says, no, I'm not going. I thought he was going to catch up with me. I ended up going to church. Lo and behold, my husband uh, uh, never showed up to church that particular day. Mm. Then the next thing he started looking for other churches <laughs> then he wrote a letter to my pastor uh pretty much withdrawing his membership mm. that's when i realized wait a minute he's he's gone mm -hmm. and he ended up finding a church and the funny thing about it like the church that he ended up finding was covenant life church was literally next door to my church the same <laughs> Adventist church. so on saturday i go and then on sunday he goes but on wednesdays uh we had a prayer meeting on wednesday at the church and he did the same thing so we right together he would drop me if i finish <laughs> it we sort of like pick each other up and i'll you know sometimes i finish it and i'll just sit in there uh i'll just talk whatever these people go to church sunday they're lost <laughs> then we ended up <laughs> you can stop because it's a long story <laughs> no no please i love <laughs> it going? keep going okay. keep going <laughs> then we ended up moving from that particular area to another area so my drive to go to church was uh that was used to be like a five minute drive then it changed it to 45 minute drive mm. so one particular sunday uh was well, saturday i didn't go to church then said you know what you you want to come with me you can just go to my church i was just like ah okay anyway i'm i'm gonna go then i ended up going to another church that he was going to and believe it or not, I never left the church up to date. Wow. But yes, but all that, that took about two years. Wow. And then we were arguing, like what I wasn't getting was he was saying, oh, you know what? Your sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future. I'm like, what? What do you mean your sins have been forgiven, past, present, and future? I know I was a sinner, but my plan was like, before I die, I'll make sure that I confess my sins. Because if as Adventists, you believe you can lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. So I knew, you know, I knew that uh, I wasn't right, but like that was uh, my trump card. Like, oh, just before I die, I'm going to confess that way I make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. And then talking about when my husband said, oh, yes, it doesn't matter. Your past, present uh, sins have been forgiven. That wasn't sitting well with me. <laughs> and then we'll talk about, uh, oh, yeah, somebody can die as a sinner and they still make it to heaven. That wasn't sitting well with me. <laughs> We'd be like, oh, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, died on the cross. Everything was finished. You don't even have to keep the Sabbath. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have to keep the Sabbath? It's the fourth commandment. You have to keep the Sabbath. And Sunday church is pretty much a mark of the beast. So, and then it says, like, you know, they always say, oh, Jesus is the um, the, the archangel. That's not what the, what the Bible teaches. And all these things were happening, but during that time, it exposed me that I was hiding behind my husband's faith. Mm -hmm. I could not stand on my two feet. I had my talking points and everything. 
So then I went to this church, they're talking about justification. I'm like, what's that? I'm like, that's just going to give people license to be sinning. <laughs> they're talking about doctrines of grace. I'm like, what do you mean by that? So so now it's just like, oh, when somebody's saying things like my antennas are just going to go all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. because if you, And then you have LNG White. Mm-hmm. Before you get baptized, you have to affirm that um, she is a prophetess. You know, mm. so by all the measures of who a prophet is, you know, if you just say one thing, then you're no longer a prophet. So as an Adventist, you have to um uphold these things. So I was just like, man, this is yeah, it's I I knew that there was LNG White and everything else, but when you dig deeper in there, it's um yeah, man, you you it's there's a, there's contradictions, you know. But the mm-hmm. the people were nice. I mean, they you know, my husband oh, got sure. saved in the church. I got saved in that church as well. But all that time, that's when I came to understand uh, what you know. Then I got baptized again, and then my pastor was like, "We need to baptize you." I'm like, "No, I was already baptized." See, I'm like, you need to get baptized. I was like, I don't know why you get get baptized because I didn't even understand that. Then, it, sure. then everything else started making sense. Like, no, you know, like he, this is believers' baptism. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, <laughs> that's amazing. That is amazing. That's an amazing story. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, just because, like you said, Evan, I, I've met a few, and like you said, they're nice, you know, uh, God fearing people. Um, even when I was uh, in the charismatic world. Um, we actually ran it. We actually used the, they let us use the building on Sunday because mm-hmm. they were on in it on Saturday, you know? So I definitely, that, that is something interesting. And, and talking about that dynamic, um, how has that, um, how did that lead you to, you know, talk about being a Berean and, and, and actually studying your word? What were some of the, the, the things that kind of led you in that direction that started the YouTube, like were, were there any other events or anything, or it was just the fact of, you know, seeing what scripture say versus what someone else is saying. Yeah. So, uh, pride, I used to do like, you know, videos. I like to talk about theology. I like to debate these particular things. I actually have friends that uh, you think like it's a movie when we get into this thing. So people are just like, you know, why don't you guys just do, um, you know, like just do a YouTube. You can be, because this is good. Other people might want to do it. Then like my friends will be like, yes, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I was just like, you guys, when you're ready, you're going to find me. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to start doing it. And lo and behold, I started doing it. So back I was like, it. girls, we need to film. You need to come. And they'll be like, oh, okay, but I don't know if I can do it on the camera. I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. Let's just do it. So mm-hmm. I do have friends who, you know, who enjoy these particular things. But I was just yeah. like, you know what? I've been saying that I was going to do it. And then I didn't do it. Then I just jumped on to do it. And then prior to this, I, um, I had another uh, channel that I was doing with other four, four or five girls that we were doing. But then when the pandemic, uh, prior to pandemic, two of them ended up having babies. And mm-hmm. then there was a pandemic, so like you know, to sit down to get uh, to get things done was um, was very challenging. So mm-hmm. I was just like, okay, uh, it'll be easier for me if I'm just doing my own thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah, because you know when people have kids, families, all this oh, I know. Pandemic, all those things, like yeah. So but like yeah, they still. Um, I think they haven't gotten back to to be able to even come together, even to film. Gotcha. But uh, that just it's called walk the talk. There are a couple okay. of, uh, we did upload a couple of videos that still there on YouTube. So that was even fun and exciting. Just like, nice. So you have like five girls all into theology. I was like, okay. That sounds awesome. Yeah. You guys need to get that back up and running. But I yes, definitely I know. understand. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I understand, you know, not waiting on people because that's actually how this podcast started. Originally, it was supposed to be me and Virgil and a whole bunch of people all together. And then, like you said, you couldn't get everybody on the same schedule. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and create this podcast and I create the platform when y'all ready, holler at me. And that's oh, how that's just cool. thinking started. <laughs> oh wow. And look what just thinking is right now. I mean, just thinking, man. It's just like, yeah, yeah. I think that's just what it is. Like, because once you start doing something, mm-hmm. it's easier for other people are just gonna join in and everything. Yeah. Now, yeah. like I do it, they my girls will be like, Oh, when am I coming on your show? When am I coming on your show? I'm like, you have an open invitation, like whenever <laughs> you're ready. I'm moving on. Yeah. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. So I I always enjoy your interactions on Twitter. 
um and 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 you know just the things you post and and uh and you know you you always uh come into the defense of just thinking sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, so yeah. how, talk about that talk about your twitter world your twitter life I man. <laughs> so i i i've had I'm, i have um facebook i have instagram i don't know how to use instagram Facebook is like people are so sensitive, even just mm -hmm. whatsoever. So when I started Twitter, I was just like, okay, you know what? People, people are giving punches. People are willing to take punches, theological punches, by the way. So I was just <laughs> like, okay, this is nice because like people are going to challenge you mm -hmm. to to the core, so to speak. So I was just like, okay, I like it here. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, like I've I've made like real people on Twitter that pretty much i've made real friendships so mm -hmm. if i made them 10 years from now these are like my brothers and sisters in christ mm -hmm. and i've made people that i've ended up challenging and they'll be like oh you know what i see your point over here and people have re reversed course i actually not even long ago this week uh i got into it with this girl just like oh you know what women can be pastors and everything i said no it can't be then you know i i presented my case to her I says oh is this true one i say 100 then she texted me says you know what um i i she lives in toronto there's no churches out here like any church you can comment i say yeah i actually know a nice good church over there i sent it to her she was so grateful and very appreciative wow so I was just like yeah so that happened on twitter so at the same time oh and then there was another one i got into it he says you know what i want to talk to your husband Mm. If the husband is not available, I need to talk to your pastor. I'm laughing the whole time. Then I came home, I said, sweetheart, uh, you've been summoned over here. Like somebody <laughs> demanding to talk to my husband. Because, you know, then my husband looked at the Twitter and then reached to the person says, hey, I hear somebody's looking for me. I'm here. And the person didn't respond. The next minute, not. they, they you know, yeah, they ended up blocking me. So I'm uh -huh. like, okay, so if you, you know, requested to see my husband, I have nothing to hide. Here's my husband. Right, right. So, like, <laughs> it's amazing. Twitter is its own world. <laughs> yes, yeah, Twitter uh, is its own world. <laughs> it, it really is. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. And like I said, I, I enjoy that, you know, and and, and like I said, the, the bolt, you're know, being able to throw punches and, you know, people going to come back and yeah. and I, I enjoy, you know, just just watch your interaction. I, I used to be heavy on there. Now I'm just kind of a spectator. I just kind of I, I watch <laughs> I, I watch the punches because I, I don't have time to throw it. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah. So I you know you're on YouTube. Is there any uh things or goals that you want to accomplish with this channel are there any things you want to do as far as like social media or podcasts or what what are some of the, the the things you're you're aspiring for uh just going into this new year yeah like i want to be able to um there are so many uh there are so many ladies who are doing things but they're doing things sort of like behind the scenes Mm. and people are not aware and nobody sees them and i see what they're doing and i know that it can bring encouragement or just a testimony to uh, sort of like other people but mm -hmm. they are not you know what i mean they are not on youtube they're not whatsoever they are just faithful godly women so i'm actually in talks with two of them because you know uh, they are my friends that go to church with them they have good beautiful testimonies and I would want them to, you know, like just be uh, being an encouragement. So, for example, like um, one lady I'm referring to, I'm telling you, she has, um, you know, she has grandchildren, she has children, and she's worked with the Lord faithfully and just saving. The thing that I'm seeing now these days is almost like when people have children, they forget um, that they still have to be working with the Lord. They still have mm. to be saving with the Lord. There's some certain things that you sort of like have to sacrifice right now. I don't know, like, can you send your children with a clear conscience to public schools with everything that's going on? So there's right. people who are sacrificing, leaving their jobs so they can be home, so they can mm -hmm. take care of their home, taking care of their husband, um, taking care of their children. And, you know, financially, they, they're going to suffer, so to speak, but there's people who have done it. And right now they, they're testifying well because they were faithful so because just for somebody to say those things people say oh you don't know you know we live in dc it's expensive out here you need two two incomes to survive right. but there's people here who who have done it and the lord has blessed them 
So I do see that there is a value that they can bring um, to so many people. Like you can be faithful and honor God in your work and the Lord will see you through. Mm, I love it. I love it. Good stuff. All right. So right here, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. What's the room again? Uh, 1240 down at the end. Ooh, what's that? Sammy, don't touch that. That's someone's old food. Here we are. Do you have the key? You have both of ours. Oh, right. Not working. Uh, Rub it. Come on. Gosh. Try flipping it over. Seriously. Why can't we go inside? I'm tired. Give me yours. You have mine. All right. What? Please, if you Dad, could just... Why aren't you opening the door? Can everyone just shut the... Don't go there. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Learn more at GoRVing.com. At Kroger, fresh groceries are our thing. So we check your delivery order for freshness at every step from farm to store and pick and pack every veggie in your free pickup order with care because we treat your food the way we'd want ours to be treated. We're fresh every day, so shop anyway. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. And right now, you can save when you shop your faves. Just buy six or more participating sale items and save 50 cents each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The 21st century Western church is in the throes of a discipleship crisis. If that sounds like I'm exaggerating, I would encourage you to look at any of the number of surveys that have been done in recent years that point to the fact that Christians just don't know the basics of their own faith. That's a problem. And it's a problem that could be very easily avoided. After all, the mission of the church, according to Matthew 28, is to go into all the world and to make disciples, learners of the Lord Jesus. Well, if that's the case, why haven't we done it? And what can we do to reverse this? Hi, I'm Kofi Adeboyan, and I'm the host of Deep Dive Discipleship, a podcast dedicated to thinking through the discipleship crisis that we face and charting a way forward. My hope is that as we have some conversations around God's word and with friends who are, praise the Lord, doing well in this field, we can learn from each other how best to fulfill the mission of the church. All right, we're back in here uh, with my good friend. And uh, this is the uh, side of the podcast. Why well, these are my three signature questions? I ask all the guests these three questions. The first signature bar question is: What kind of music do you listen to? Rock and roll. All right. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but rock is my favorite. Nice, nice. Yes. I didn't expect that. I like that answer. <laughs> all right. Next signature bar question is: What book or books are you currently reading? The true Christian, JCR. Mm. But this year, I want to, um, I don't want to read a lot of books this year because I want to mm-hmm. finish, I want to do uh, the, the Bible challenge. Mm-hmm. So I want to give it a try. I don't know if that's going to work because there's quite some books I bought last year. I didn't finish reading them. Then my husband said, I don't think you're buying any book. You need to finish the books. Because <laughs> like, okay, fine. I'm going to be on it. <laughs> Audio or <laughs> something. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have the same problem. I have a lot of books that I've started. <laughs> Not too many that I've finished. All right. Last signature bar question is what podcasts or sermons do you listen to? Wow. That's so many. I want I can only say one or oh, however many you want. Oh. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, I do uh listen to the bar podcast because it's easier for me if I'm driving. I like to see. I'll do um dividing line by mm-hmm. dr white uh apologia church mm-hmm. i um, joseph boat uh is the institute in, mm-hmm. in canada yes i i like that they're doing good stuff out there uh josh harris uh conversation that matter yep. i do listen to them um jason whitlock i listen yes. to jason whitlock like yeah because i feel like it's 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 different, you know. I love I, I like love that, fearless. You know? I love yes, fearless. yeah, fearless, yeah, you know, cross politics. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I do cross politics. Yes, um, walk preacher clips. That's my. <laughs> well, well, I, I like that he's nobody knows who he is, but I, I do believe if I want to dig deeper, I can unmask him. But okay, he can remain anonymous. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, walk preacher clips. Yeah. There's All so right. many. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I love you. That, that's a good list. That's a good list. Awesome. Well, listen, first, thank you again for coming on the show. 
this has definitely been fun. Glad to uh, have you on. I always kind of give my guests an opportunity to close us out. Uh, any words of encouragement and then let people know where to find you and your YouTube name again and all of that good stuff. You can do that right here. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed uh, my encouragement to people right now. There's so many things that are going on, but Jesus is still advancing his church. He's still building his church. So you don't have every opportunity that you have. You are on uh, social media. You're not on social media. Just take that opportunity to be a witness the social media this is a public square you might we always want to go someplace else to reach out to people but right now everybody's on their phone so just take advantage to reach people with the message of christ it's never too late to come to christ repent and believe the gospel he's able to save you to the uttermost. my channel is called barians babes i'm very active on twitter you can follow me there at barians babes Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again to the bar listeners. Thank you guys for listening to the bar podcast, your favorite podcast every Tuesday. Make sure you go to the bar gear.com. I mean the bar podcast.com, but if you want some bar gear, then you go to the bar gear.com. Make sure you get that, uh, hit that network tab and listen to all the dope podcasts we have in the network. And until next time you guys, God bless. And we are out. At Kroger, fresh groceries are our thing. So we check your delivery order for freshness at every step from farm to store and pick and pack every veggie in your free pickup order with care because we treat your food the way we'd want ours to be treated. We're fresh every day, so shop anyway. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Restrictions may apply. And right now, you can save when you shop your faves. Just buy six or more participating sale items and save 50 cents each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. At Firehouse Subs, a portion of every purchase helps provide life-saving equipment to first responders. We make our subs differently because our subs can make a difference. Like our spicy Cajun chicken sub with sliced, grilled Cajun seasoned chicken breast, melted pepper jack cheese, house-made Cajun mayo and jalapenos, all on a toasted sub roll. And it's only at Firehouse Subs. Click the banner now to start your pickup or delivery order.